Okay, hi everyone. My name is Sanaya Pierre, and I'm going to be going over Fusion 360 with you today and the, some of the basics for it. Um, so first, I'm going to teach you, you know how to navigate it, some basic you know, navigation tools, user interface, on that kind of information, and then I'm going to go through two different projects with you. Uh, a basic rectangle so I can show you how some sketch tools work because in Fusion 360 to get your model to where this one is now you first have to sketch out all of the pieces. So I'm going to show you how to do a rectangle so I can show you some tools to get your rectangle to look okay and then I'm going to show you how to make this here bench. Adds a few curves um, so it's a little more challenging it's not that difficult when I show you. So let's get started. So first we're going to go over where everything is on uh, Fusion 360. So first, where my mouse is hovering, my pointer, is the data panel. This is where you're going to find all of your projects. And these are all my projects that I use to create this one um, pavilion. And this is a scale model, so I made it physically. And then this is the virtual one. If I go to home. This is where you're gonna where you can organize all your projects into different types. So you educational, I have my personal projects. That's what I'm gonna be looking at today or using. So I have two. So this is how this is gonna look. Next you have the application bar, which is up here where my pointer is hovering over. And when you have multiple projects open, like see I have two, this is where you can switch between the two projects or however many things you have open. Next, we're going to have the profile, which is in this top right where I just clicked, where your initials would be. Um, so if you want to access the web, the Autodesk uh, website uh, for any account information, like maybe you forgot a password or something, or you want to change your username, anything like that, this is how you will get there. Um, next is the toolbar. So my pointer is hovering over the toolbar right now. And this is where you're going to find a whole bunch of tools where you can turn a basic sketch into something like this. Um, so the two tools I'm going to be going into more deeply are going to be the Create Sketch tool and the Extrusion tool. But I can go over a few other tools. So this tool, if you want to make um, holes in your work, uh, but you don't want to like take the time to create a new sketch, extrude a hole through the whole piece because that could take a while, this is where you use your hole tool. And then as you can see, when you hover over a tool, if um, it'll show you how to use that tool, like instructions, just in case um, you forget or you just need a reminder. Uh, next is this rectangular pattern tool. So if you want to duplicate multiple uh, components that you make, this is how you can copy them, move them around. A fillet will give something uh, rounded edges. A shell will hollow something out. A joint is how um, you would put things together. So if you import certain components into one project like I did here, like if I unhide the joints, all these little squares, those are joints. That's how I connected everything together. So when I move it, everything, nothing like falls. Um, the inspect tool, here's a ruler. So if I need to measure how long I made this piece here, I'd click this. Like this and it tells me it's three inches uh, long so that just help you measure then this is where you'd want to import uh, different components so like this these are all separate components next is the browser which is where you're going to find all the information for your project so you click this arrow here all the components that you may import are going to be here the joints that you may use are going to be here um, the different views you want to make your primary views are going to be here. Uh, the units of measurement you use. I'm American, so I use inches. That's just how it is. Uh, next is the view cube. So this is the view cube over here. This is where you're going to see your different views. So if I click this one, this is the home view. This is the best view that you want to work with, where you can see virtually everything. Then you're going to have your top view. You're going to have your left view, your bottom view, your right view. Then you're going to have a front view. Then you're going to have a back view. So those are the views you really want to focus on. But the home view is very important when you're in the process of modeling. Uh, next is the canvas. So this whole this whole white space here, this is the canvas. This is where your project is going to come together. Uh, this is where you're going to start your sketch all the way to you put all your pieces together to get a beautiful piece. 
Next is the navigation bar down here where you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, move things around if you don't have a mouse. Uh, you can add grid lines if that helps you. I personally don't like the grid lines, so I don't put them there. You can uh, show multiple views, which is interesting sometimes. I just keep it in sync uh, in a single view for now. And then finally is the timeline. So at the bottom where my pointer is hovering over, this is where it's going to show every step, every component, every sketch, every extrusion that you do to reach your final product. So here, this project is just made up of a whole bunch of components. So all these little squares are components that I've imported. And then these are the joints that I was talking about. And then the rectangular pattern I mentioned and a rigid group to keep everything together. Okay, now we're going to go to the rectangle. So to create a sketch, what you're going to do is the top, here we're going to close this so we have more space. But this button here where it says create sketch, you're going to click it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the X and Z view. But this view is the better to get that home view, a really nice home view where you can see virtually everything. So you click there, then it'll make it flat. You can zoom in, zoom out, whatever you like. I'm going to zoom in a little. Um, so there is a rectangle tool. So that could be easier for you, but I want to show you how to make it just in case you just want to use separate lines. So as you can see, this rectangle here, escape, escape to exit out of that. Um, you got equal straight lines all around. But say you do something like this, that'll be bad. You want straight lines. So what you're going to do, you're going to use constraints. Constraints will make your sketch look good. So there's two options. You can do the parallel perpendicular constraint pair, or you can do the horizontal and vertical uh, constraint. So we're going to escape this. To exit out of any tool that you have, uh, just click the escape key on your keyboard. So this is the perpendicular tool. Notice on a rectangle, these are perpendicular. So you want these to be perpendicular. So I'm going to click this, click this. Now these are perpendicular to one another. And then the parallel tool is up here right next to the parallel. And then if you hover over it, it'll tell you the name. So you see these lines are parallel to one another, and these lines are parallel to one another. Uh, so basically what you want to do, you want to make these lines, this line isn't straight. So you click this line, click this line, boom, now they're straight. Now you have a nice rectangle. Okay, so that's that's the easy sketch. Um, so I'm going to exit out of here. Uh, I'm going to delete this. So just right click on it, press delete. Um, and then just click everything and then click OK. And then it'll all be gone. So now I'm going to show you how to make uh, this bench here. Now it looks complicated, but I promise you it's not. So first we're going to do is click the line tool, top right. Uh, depending, I'm making this four inches long, uh, but depending on how you want yours to look, you can make it however long you want. This is how I did it to scale in my real life model. So I have four inches here. You want to start with the basic straight line. Now what we're going to do is to get the curves that you saw here. Let me go back. To get these um, curves, what you need is construction lines because you want it to be even. And just trying to go straight at it, it's going to take too long, and we don't we don't like that. So to get a construction line, this line isn't going to impact your final sketch or your model. It's just does to help you uh, draw out um, what you want some things to look like, where you want some things to be. But you can delete them as soon as you can, and then your model will be just fine. So go back to your line tool up top, or you can just click L on your keyboard. We're going to go to the middle of this line to get that deep curve that you saw. And on, let me see if you can see it. But on the screen, you can see there's an X with a triangle that kind of looks like uh, an opposite exponent. If that's what you want, to, if that's how you want to think about it. That is the center of this line. So that's where I want to be to get that deep curve. I'm going to go up this line and I want that curve, um, the space between the bottom of that curve and this four inch line to be 0.266. Uh, so that's how I have it. Um, but if you want a different, if you want a different length, that is fine. And make sure you see the square, like that little symbol that lets you know it's a right angle, because you want all your lines to be straight. Now, what we're going to do is each peak of the curve needs to be equal distance away from the end of this line. 
So we're going to start this line, still a construction line as you can see. We're going to make this space one inch. Then we're going to do the same on this side. This is going to be one inch. Click it, press enter. Now here it already gives you points, but if it doesn't, you go to create, click this point, and then you can add a point wherever you like. Now we're going to do one, two, two more construction lines, and then we can add the curve. So the construction line is going to stem from this point, and I want that curve to be 1.063 inches tall. Escape, click L, or go back up to that line tool. Do the same thing here, 1.063, wherever you like. Uh, then escape. Um, so now we have the base of how we're going to get our curves, and this is what you want yours to look like. We're going to make sure we're not working in a construction line anymore, and how you tell if something is a construction line is if it's a dashed line like this. This solid line, not a construction, dashed construction. And all of these, what I'm highlighting here, those are dimension lines that just help you understand like how long something is. So like I said, this space between this point and this point, that's one inch. This from this point, this point, that's four inches. From this point to this point, that's 0 0.266 inches. From this point to this point, that's 1.063 inches. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this fit point spline tool to add the curves. You're going to click that. You're going to go to your origin spot. Then you're going to click this next point. Just click every point. Then this center point and this point. At this point, now what you want to do, you keep your mouse here, click enter, don't move it, because if you move it, that'll mess up the curve. And there you go, now you have the curve. And these lines are going to show up just um, for dimensioning reasons. Now we're going to click finish sketch, either here or here, doesn't matter. Oh, and just so you know, I didn't touch on this earlier, but the sketch palette is where you can find different tools and how you want your sketch to display. So like I said, construction lines. Uh, but you can choose not to have these dimensions shown, um, not to have the constraints shown. So let's finish this sketch. We're going to go to our home view. Now, I said we're going to use the extrude tool. Now, depending on how many pieces you are, it's going to automatically highlight something. It's not always going to be what you want to extrude. So if it's not, just exit out. It says select, so select what face. And I'm going to go to the top view to show you width. So I want this to be 1.5 inches wide. So I'm going to use this arrow to stretch out how, how uh, wide I want it. Go to 1.5, then we're going to click OK. We're going to go back to our home view. Now you notice it looks like this bench, but not. it doesn't have the same physical material as this bench. So bonus thing where I'm going to go over is how to add materials and appearances. I'm not going to add appearance to this, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you right click on this project up here, right click, it's going to highlight everything. So everything that is highlighted is what's going to be affected. I'm going to click this button that says physical material. And what you're going to do, I want this to be pine. So you just drag whatever, here's the library, drag whatever wood you want. Now to get to the appearance, you could double right click here, click appearance, or click the A key on your keyboard. Then um, it'll eventually pop up. Just give it a moment. And then you could add some color or make it look like a physical material. Whatever you want. So here, uh, thank you for listening, and I hope you found this video very helpful.